लिम्फॉइड ऑर्गन लिम्फॉइड ऑर्गन सो इफ यू अगेन स्टार्ट विद से द डेवलपमेंट ऑल द पार्ट ऑफ गट आर डेवलपिंग फ्रॉम एंड्रोडम द फोर मिड एंड हाइन गट दिस इज नॉट अ डेरिवेटिव ऑफ गट इट इज डिराइव फ्रॉम मीसोडम मीसोडम विच पार्ट ऑफ मीसोडम डॉर्सल मीसो गैस्ट्रीन वाई सो इट इज लाइंग इफ यू रिमेम्बर ऑन द राइट और लेफ्ट ऑफ द स्टमक स्टमक इज अ पार्ट ऑफ गट स्क्रीन इज लाइंग टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ द स्टमक सो लेफ्ट ऑफ गट so by rotation we all know it's the uh, dorsal part comes to the left of the gut mainly in the four gut part so it is coming from the dorsal mesogastrium it is uh, projecting to the greater sac and the part of lesser lies in the left margin of lesser sac right so that is also we need to understand that lies in the left margin of uh, lesser sac every word here is important not just to for you to cram but for you to understand that uh, if you are operating on the lesser sac what is there on the left margin of it right So it's the left margin of lesser sac. <clears throat> What is the role of spleen? Spleen degeneration of old RBCs and being a lymphoid organ for for the production of lymphocytes. So there are two roles of it. That we'll understand better when we discuss the histology of it, right? So remember the histology is important and it has two roles. One is a you can say the phagocytic role because it's a lymphoid organ. One is a phagocytic role. Second is a sequestration of old denatured rbcs so sequestration of rbcs sequestration of old rbcs old rbcs remember that it it is seen in the red red pulp and the white pulp and you see the histology of the spleen now spleen over here is the only part of the abdominal cavity which is not a part of the gut but its vascular supply is coming from gut For example, let me tell you other examples. A kidney is it lying in the abdominal cavity? Yes. The blood supply of kidney is renal artery, renal, renal vein. Is it going into portal circulation? No. Okay. Adrenal is it a part of abdominal cavity? Yes. Blood supply? Yes. Is it going to portal circulation? No. And why does the spleen? Because we already have seen that if we take the splenic vein, if we take the splenic vein, it is actually joining with the superior mesenteric vein to actually form the portal vein. So it is not just a part; it is a major content of the portal vein, and the other veins which are entering to splenic vein is the arteries which are coming from the splenic arteries. For example, the so short gastric veins, the left gastroepiphyseal veins, so all these veins, the short gastric vein over there, the left side gastroepiphyseal vein, and one vein we have just uh, seen pancreas. When we did discussing the pancreas, the postulations we also saw the inferior mesenteric vein. The question is that when the spleen is not a part of gut, then there is no duct. There is no duct. See, liver is a part of gut. Yes, why? Because there is bile duct connecting liver to the gut. Pancreas is a part of gut. Yes, why? Because there is pancreatic duct directly opening to the gut. Is there any duct connecting the spleen? No. Though it is not a part of or derivative of a gut, why this vascular supply is directly related to the portal circulation? The reason is. For the portal vein, which is entering to the liver, liver one of the major functions of liver, the multiple functions of liver are there. We all know around eight to ten major functions of liver are there. One of them is formation of bile, and that bile is formed by the when the sequestration of the old denatured RBCs occur, the hemoglobin separates. It will give rise to its uh, raw material for the formation of bile. That is why when the splenic vein is carrying the blood from away from the spleen again back to the circulation, it is going to the liver. This is why the connection of the splenic vein is to the Portal circulation, else there is no use of it. I hope you get any point. It's a lymphoid organ, not a derivative of the gut. Remember it. There is no duct connecting the spleen to the gut. Derived from mesogastrium. Derived from what? Derived from mesoderm or mesogastrium. Not derived from endoderm. Not derived from endoderm. Which pancreas was derived from endoderm. The ventral and dorsal buds they are derived from endoderm only. Not in this case, please. Now this is the basic idea of the spleen. Now where does it actually lie? Now we have what? We have ribs. So spleen is actually it is only on the left side. It's lying on the left side, right? In front of ninth to eleventh rib mainly, though it can be lying from tenth to twelfth rib as well on the left side, right? It does not cross. Remember this point. It does not cross the mid axillary line. It does not cross the mid axillary line, meaning by it is lying on the, you can say the posterior part of the ribs. Because see, 
where is 11th rib not anteriorly present posteriorly where is 12th rib present posteriorly so basically spleen is lying on the left side posteriorly being covered by this ribs over here so it is covered by the ribs posteriorly so ribs like suppose this three fingers are my three ribs could be 9 10th 11th or 10th 11th 12th on the left side and the spleen is located over here so now the spleen is located over here it will have a you can say a superior and inferior border or an anterior and a posterior border the two borders over here as it is developmentally from various small small mesogastrium uh, we don't as plenicoli so when they merge there are some lobulations which might be present and due to that the there are few notches that are present mainly on the anterior border if you look over here in the cadaveric vein of the spleen this over here so this is the anterior border oblique superior border and here is that notch which i was referring to notch over here this over here is a posterior border or inferior present more medially can also call it as a medial border there is a pole over here there is a anterior pole over here fine more anteriorly and there is a posterior pole over here fine more posteriorly this anterior pole does not cause a mid axillary line mid axillary line is there on the sides we'll learn more about in the upper limb but just be for you that the pectoralis major lateral border is around the anti axillary fold the latissimus dorsi its lateral border probably is a posterior axillary fold and between this anterior pole and the posterior axillary fold between them we have a mid axillary line or mid axillary fold so spleen does not cause that part it's lying mainly on the posterior lateral aspect so this is anterior posterior borders and what is in between over here in between over here we we have the splenic hilum this is the hilum of the spleen hilum of spleen now what is entering over here and what is exiting from here that we'll see but i hope you understood this and the spleen is covered by a tight capsule so remember in a clinical point the spleen is one of the most common intra abdominal organs to rupture in blunt injuries for car accidents or any blunt injury in the abdomen it is one of the common organs to rupture in blunt injuries of the abdomen that you'll read more in this surgery in when in surgery in do the abdominal trauma so it is one of the most common organs therefore spleen surgeries are very common if case comes to you in a most mostly emergencies as a uh, acute injury trauma accident gunshot wound this and that whatever it is the spleen a rupture is very common and that case obviously there is going to be severe blood loss you need to remove the spleen and being a lymphoid organ what happens is once you remove the spleen if it is a due to this trauma and all obviously being a lymphoid the immunity goes down so you have to give prophylactic uh, vaccinations to the patient to protect from the various bacteria meaning the pneumococcal and other bacteria that is one thing that I have to understand so spleen importance i'm telling you what is the importance of it clinically as well function wise was this location wise it is this and you have to remove it now once a point comes to remove the spleen there comes a the role of anatomy now how to remove it how to approach it spleen is a intra peritoneal that is also which we have to understand and the repeating it we have already done when the beginning you we were talking of the intra peritoneal peritone organs we have seen that the spleen is a intra peritoneal so it is covered all throughout by the peritoneum except a few places where the hilum is there so where or any other organ is attached to it that we see there it is uh, attached with the ligaments except that it is totally covered by the peritoneum so it's an intra peritoneal organ